Now, I think this is important because we need to know that when God asks us to do something, that he's equipped us to do it. You've probably heard the quote may sound a little cliche, but that God doesn't call the prepared, but he prepares the called. Ephesians chapter four, verse one is gonna be uh, the main scripture I'll be talking about. It's the apostle Paul talking to the church. And he says this, therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. So let's pray, we'll jump in. Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. Help us to connect with you like never before tonight. Help us to understand what it means to be called by you. And we pray and lift up our pastor that you would bless and strengthen and continue to lead and guide him as we move forward as a church and continue to make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. So I wanna do a little pop quiz in here with everybody tonight, okay? I'm gonna give you a, a question or scenario and you raise your hand A, B, or C, okay? Here's the question. If you knew that later on tonight you were gonna receive a phone call from God, like you were gonna leave here tonight and you knew the phone was gonna ring and it was gonna be God calling, would you A, be nervous and send them straight to voicemail? Go ahead, A, any, any A's in the house? A couple, a couple, it just depends on what you did last weekend, right? <clears throat> okay, A. B, B, would you pull out that prayer request list, right? Okay, God, you need to give me some money because I'm struggling, you need to like heal my mama, you need to, uh, uh, I don't know what's wrong with my kids, but fix or deliver that, right? You, you, you pull, out, pull out that prayer request, anybody B? B, prayer request, a lot of people? Okay, how about C? C is the, the questions. Like, if God calls, you got some questions. God, I need to know, like, why did I get fired from work? God, I, I need to know, like, what, what happened, what, like, what was with that girl? Why did she say no to me? I mean, how could she resist this? <laughs> right? Like, hey, questions. Or maybe you got questions like, God, what is up with the dinosaurs? Or, God, are aliens real? Like, you have, anybody see questions? Like, a lot of people have questions. Yeah, good. Or, actually, anybody want to go back to A? All right, just checking. <laughs> Or anybody, D, where you would just say, God, what do you have to say? I'm listening. And I think listening is one of those lost art forms of prayer. It really is. I, I love that JFK quote. You know where he says, hey, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. I think it ought to be the same with God. Hey, I'm not going to tell you what I want, God, but what do you want me to do? And because the reality is God is calling us. Or he has a calling for each and every one of us. He's calling us to a, a plan, a purpose, a mission, a vision for our lives. God has something great that better than we can imagine planned for us to do. He's calling us to that. In fact, the word call comes from the Greek word, the New Testament in the Bible was originally written in the Greek language. That's why a lot of times we'll define a word. But the word called or call comes from the Greek word kaleo. Kaleo, and it means to be called or to be summoned or to be invited. And that's what God is doing. He's inviting us to be a part of something, to be a part of something that's bigger than ourselves. He's calling you. But the key is... Not whether or not he's calling you or not. The key is how we respond to that call. How we respond to what he's saying to us, what he's calling us to do, what he's, who he's calling us to be. And when you look through the Old Testament, you see a lot of different examples of God calling people. And I've kind of categorized it. I've broken it down to four different responses. So I'm going to go over these tonight. And maybe you'll see yourself in some of these responses. But number one, the number one response when God calls is the runner. The runner. You may know who I'm talking about. Jonah. Jonah was a runner. God called him and Jonah ran. Check this out. This is Jonah chapter one, verses one through three. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. 
go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. Interesting that Tarshish, Tarshish was in the exact opposite direction of Nineveh where he was supposed to be going. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for the port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Jonah was a runner. He was called by God and yet he ran away. He ran in the other direction. Now, you're probably familiar with the story. You know what happened. They threw him overboard because of a great storm. A giant fish swallowed him. While he was in that fish, he repented and said, okay, God, I'm gonna trust you. I'm gonna do things your way. The, the fish spit him out. He went and preached to Nineveh and the people were saved. Great story. But Jonah first ran from God. I think about my kids now. We're playing football together like every weekend. I have four boys, and so it's always the two older brothers versus the two younger brothers and me. And so when we're playing, um, I'm, on off, uh, I'm, I'm on offense, and I got the two little boys, and, and, and my third son, Bruno, if, it's, if, if he doesn't get the ball, it's like meltdown city. So the play is always pitch to Bruno. And so here we are, I'm lined up, here's our touchdown, we got my two older sons, like the little defense right here, the little linebackers, and, and so here's the play, pitch to Bruno, I pitch to him, and then I try to block him as best as I can, try to let him score, but then, you know, they're little and they're quick, and it's like, ah. And so they get past me, and then they start running towards Bruno. Well, you know what Bruno does? Whoops, he, he starts running the other way. And then he runs all the way, he's like, yeah, touchdown, I scored! I'm like, no, you were, your touchdown is over, it's over here. And I think there's an important lesson in that is that our touchdown, our score, our victory is on the other side of obedience. It's not gonna happen, our peace of mind, peace of heart, it's not gonna happen when we're running the other way. We've gotta get through some things. We've gotta overcome some things. There's gonna be a challenge, but we can do it. And in fact, we're never gonna be overcomers unless we overcome something. And so we've got to be able to push forward through obstacles, challenges, so we can get that victory, so we can get the peace and the fulfillment and the satisfaction in life that God has planned out for us, that God has called us to. But it's on the other side of obedience. So don't be a runner. Don't be a runner. The second category of responses when God calls is the doubter, the doubter. And I'm talking tonight about Moses. Moses doubted God, he had a lot of insecurities in him. And again, you're probably familiar with the story when he, heard, when he hears God's voice coming from the burning bush. And, and he tells him, go, Egypt, set the people free. Pharaoh's persecuting them. And, Again and again, Moses kind of makes excuses and he doubts himself. In Exodus 3.11, Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Exodus 4.1, but Moses protested again. What if they won't believe me or listen to me? What if they say the Lord never appeared to you? There's another time the Bible talks about how he had a speech impediment or a stuttering problem. And he says, how am I supposed to go speak to the Pharaoh? Moses was a doubter when the call of God came. But eventually, we know that Moses found confidence in God, confidence in who he was. He went back to Egypt and led his people uh, to freedom from slavery. Now, I think this is important because we need to know that when God asks us to do something, that he's equipped us to do it. You've probably heard the quote, may sound a little cliche, but that God doesn't call the prepared, but he prepares the called. Let me say it this way. Lynn, let me show you. Can I have 20 bucks? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you guys, 20, 20 bucks. Let's get back to the scriptures, hold on. I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding, okay, 20 bucks, 20 bucks. How was he able to give me $20 just now? I'll tell you how, because I gave it to him earlier and I asked him to give me $20 when 
when I asked for it. And maybe you see where I'm going. Maybe you see where I'm going. When God asks us to do something, he's already given us everything that we need to be able to do it. And I believe this is a word of knowledge for someone in here tonight. With God, you are enough. Please receive that. With God, you are enough. You do have what it takes. You can make a difference. A lot of times we disqualify ourselves. We think we're not good enough or we'll never be able to amount to it. Look at the people that God used. They were like Avengers. Really, they weren't like Avengers. They were more like the goof troop, but God still used them in a mighty way. He really did, and, and please know that with God, you are enough. You have everything you need. God has given you everything you need to be who he's called you to be. You could be confident in who you are in him. So don't be a doubter. Don't be a runner and don't be a doubter. Number three, the third response that I found through the, through the Old Testament is the confirmer. The confirmer. You know what I'm talking about? I just need confirmation. The confirmer. And this is Gideon. Gideon. God had a great call on his life and and, and, and he needed a sign, and he needed multiple signs. This is Judges chapter six, verses 36 through 40. Then Gideon said to God, if you're truly going to use me to rescue Israel as you promised, prove it to me in this way. I'll put a wool fleece on the threshing floor tonight. If the fleece is wet with dew in the morning and the ground is dry, then I'll know that, what, that you are going to help me rescue Israel as you promised. And that is just what happened. When Gideon got up early the next morning, he squeezed the fleece and wrung out a whole bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, please don't be angry with me, but let me make one more request. Let me use the fleece for one more test. This time, let the fleece remain dry while the ground around it is wet with dew. So that night, God did as Gideon asked. The fleece was dry in the morning, but the ground was covered with dew. Gideon needed a sign. He needed God to do something or show him something. He wanted confirmation. And God is a good God. God has his plan. He gave him a sign. Gideon then believed and then went on to win the great battle. And speaking of signs, I found a funny sign I just wanted to show you guys. I thought it was pretty hilarious, so we'll put it on the screen. Please, speaking of signs. <laughs> just thought it was a great sign. That is a great sign. It doesn't really have to do much with anything, but good sign. But how many of y'all sometimes need a sign or want confirmation? I, I, I do this. I do this. Sometimes I'm at a place and I'm, I almost feel like God's telling me, hey, go tell that person I love them. Or, hey, go t tell that person about Jesus. And I'm like, whoa. Whoa, God. <laughs> I have no idea who they are. They're gonna think I'm crazy. And uh, if you really want me to do this, you're gonna need to give me a sign. Like I'm gonna need some confirmation somehow. Like someone's gonna need to tell me something in person. And, but what I've learned is that it's probably, not, it's probably not the devil that's telling you to go tell somebody about Jesus. <laughs> like why don't we just trust God and do it? What we have to understand and what we learn from Gideon is that we can trust God at his word. That we can always trust his word, that he is faithful to perform it. I love the scripture that talks about how his word will never return void, but it will always accomplish what it's intended to. We can trust the word of God. Yes, signs and confirmations are great, but this is truly the only sign we need. This is God's word that he breathed, that he spoke into existence. This is the word of God. This is sign enough for us to be able to trust and obey and follow. All we need is the word of God. We don't need to be a confirmer. Don't be a runner. Don't be a doubter. Don't be a confirmer. You're watching online. And number four, my favorite, the winner. The winner. And this was the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah, I think he had a winning response to the call of God in his life. Isaiah chapter six, verse eight. Then I heard the Lord 
asking, whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? And here's what Isaiah said. Here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. And we know that Isaiah went on to be one of the greatest prophets of all time, prophesying even the arrival and the death and events of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, hundreds of years beforehand. Here I am, send me. And that word is powerful. The Old Testament was originally written in the Hebrew language. And the word for send me, here I am, send me, is a word called hinini. Hinini, it's a powerful word. It means send me. No limits, no distractions. The Brian translation is let's go. And I wonder if there's a group of people here at Legacy Church and watching online that are willing to say, send me. No limits, no distractions. Let's go. I wonder, I wonder what we could do. I imagine what we could do, what God could do if all of us had that attitude, had that winning response. And we said, here I am. Send me. No limits, no distractions. Let's go. Imagine the difference we can make in our families, our friends, our jobs, our city, our state, our country, our world. And I don't know about you, but I am thankful to be part of a church and to serve with a pastor that's living out their calling, that's living out the calling to say, send me, no limits, here I am. Living out the calling to reach the lost, to help and heal the hurting, living out the calling to take biblical stands for freedom and for righteousness. Let's thank God for this church and our pastor one more time. <clears throat> when I first moved to Albuquerque, I was going to college at UNM, and I would sometimes go to church at another church across town. I would sometimes go, you know, like if I wasn't too hungover from the night before. And then I met my wife, her and I had a class together in college and I liked her and she invited me to this church. I was like, let's go, I love church, come on. I liked her though. <clears throat> and so I began coming to this church uh, all the time and I was coming again and again and again and then she said, hey, by the way, you should come to church with me on Wednesday night. I looked at her half sideways, like, Wednesday night? Who goes to church on Wednesday night? Like, who has church on Wednesday night? That's weird. But I was like, yeah, I'm in. You're, you're there, I'm there. <laughs> and so I started going to church more and more and more. I pretty much got saved, like, every service I was, I was at, you know. I would, uh, you guys know the drill. You've probably done it before. I was, you, you know, sitting. It's a time at the end with the prayer, and Pastor Steve said, hey, you want to accept Jesus? Raise your hand, and I would, I would have my hands in my lap. I'd, I, I'd do this, you know, like, hey, like, hey, God, you see it, but I don't want anybody to come stand next to me or take me to some room or anything like that. Like, just, like, just, just me. I got saved like every week. It was awesome. But I remember specifically, I was sitting right up there where you guys are, I was, sitting, I was sitting right up there and I had this thought and it's never left me. Pastor Steve was preaching, he was just killing it like he always does. He was just getting after it. Like, yeah, you know, he's kind of, oh, or whatever, you know. Woo, 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 amen. He was getting it and, and I was sitting up there and I had this thought. The world needs more strong men of God like that guy and I wanna be one. And I believe that was my call. That was my call from God. And I said, God, here I am. Send me. No limits, no distractions. Let's go. And as I close tonight, I want to ask you, are you willing to respond in that way? Are you willing to respond in a way that God could use you? But I think first it's important to know that our calling is always more about who we are 
than what we do. Our calling is more about who we are than what we do. Remember that scripture that we talked about at the very beginning, Ephesians, where the Apostle Paul said, I beg you to live a life worthy of your calling. What kind of life are we living? If we're gonna be called of God, we've got to live a life worthy of that calling. If you're watching online, what kind of life are you living? Not that we're perfect, not that we're never gonna make mistakes, but we've gotta live a life that's pursuing righteousness and holiness and purity. We're trying to separate from sin and things that are gonna try to hold us down and hold us back. We've gotta live a life that's worthy of our calling. Is that the kind of life that you're living? Are you living a life worthy of your calling? And if you're not, it's not too late to start. Maybe you've been a runner or a doubter. I've been all those things. But tonight is a great night. The end of a year, the beginning of a new year. To say, I'm gonna start fresh with God. I'm gonna get rid of the distractions. I'm gonna say, no limits, God, send me, here I am. I'm gonna live a life worthy of my call. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? And if you're in here and you say, hey, I haven't been a lot, I haven't been living that kind of life. I haven't been living for God. I've been doing my own thing. Maybe you've walked with God before, but have walked away. I wanna give you an opportunity to get things right, to have a fresh start with God. Maybe there are some things you need to separate separate from, maybe some habits. You can begin to live a life worthy of your calling and know that, hey, no one's perfect. And thank God that he's a God of forgiveness. God of another chance. So if you're in here and you say, hey, pray for me. I wanna know that I'm forgiven. I wanna know that I'm right with God. I want a fresh start. I wanna live a life worthy of the calling. I didn't know I was called by God, but you are. We all are. But it starts with who we are. We need his help. We need him in our lives. Again, with him, we are enough. But without him, we'll always struggle. So if you're in here and you say, hey, I want God in my life. I want to accept Jesus. I need forgiveness. I want a fresh start. On the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. This is the same thing that I had to do years ago. I'm gonna give you the same opportunity to essentially answer that call from God. Say, God, my life is not my own anymore. It belongs to you. So on the count of three, if you're ready, I wanna help you pray a prayer tonight. One, two, three. Will you raise your hand if that's you? Thank you, guys. Thank you. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you, I see that hand. God bless you, thank you. Thank you, if you're watching online, I want you to raise your hand as well, just as of a symbolic gesture towards God. He, he knows, he sees. Thank you, thank you, I see your hands all over. Wow, awesome. If you raise your hand, I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want you to pray it out loud. The Bible says in the book of Romans, if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord, then believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. That's a prayer we're gonna pray. This is gonna give God access to come into your life and move and work and strengthen and help and bless you. So if you raised your hand, pray this prayer with me. Maybe you felt like you should have raised your hand, but you didn't pray this prayer with us. Everybody in here who believes in what we're doing, let's pray in support of those so no one's praying alone. Say, dear God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe he died for me and I believe he rose again. So right now, I accept Jesus as Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sin and help me to do what's right. My life belongs to you, all of it, 
no limits, no distractions. Here I am. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. And let's thank God for those that made that decision. I do want to pray one more prayer. And I believe this is a little more specific. But if you're in here and you feel like you have a a call to ministry on your life, I wanna pray for you, I wanna clarify, I believe we're all called to ministry, all of us are. Ministry simply means serving people and honoring God. We're all called to do that. We should all take the next step class and get involved and serve in some form or fashion. We're all called to ministry, but if you have a call on your life to like work in in full-time ministry, something along those lines, I'm gonna ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes just, just for another moment. If that's you and you say, yeah, I feel like God's put something on my heart. I don't know exactly how it looks, but maybe that's you. I wanna pray for you tonight as well. I'm gonna ask on the count of three if you would raise your hand and I'd pray over you. I believe God has something for you tonight. If that's you on the count of three, we raise your hand. One, two, three online. If that's you, raise your hand or can you give me a little wave in the comments? Thank you, wow. Wow, lots of hands, awesome. Awesome. The thought I would give you, if you're raising your hand right now, the thought I would give you is this, start serving somewhere. Do something somewhere. Maybe it's not full-time yet, or maybe it's not a job or anything yet, but start serving somewhere. Allow God to be able to trust you with the small things because it'll unlock the doors of the greater things later on. Start serving somewhere, and I would also say, Begin to pray in tongues as often as you can. Pray in the spirit as often as you can. It'll build up and develop the gifts that God has put inside of you. If you're raising your hand right now, I'm gonna pray over you. Heavenly Father, I thank you. You see these hands. You know the call you've put on their lives. I pray that you would continue to develop them. God, strengthen them. Give them opportunities to serve people, serve you. Thank you for opening doors for them, and I thank you, God, that you're gonna use them and their lives in a mighty way. God, as we're all called to ministry, you're gonna use all of us to reach more people to make a difference, as we say at Legacy Church, to live generously, God. Pour into us your goodness and love and grace and mercy that we could pour it out on everyone that we come across, that we would reach people in this new year like never before. But God, you know these hands, these hearts, these calls you have on their lives, God, lead and direct their steps. And I pray your good and perfect and pleasing will over their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. 